Positive psychology is the study of positive emotions like joy and contentment, positive experiences, as well as positive institutions, positive organizations, basically everything good in life can fall under the big umbrella of positive psychology. So if you think of the whole human experience as ranging on this scale from say minus five to plus five, you know, psychology has traditionally focused on that minus five to zero end of things where stuff's going wrong, there's problems we need to fix, and that's really important. But positive psychology, I think, has propelled the field toward thinking about that range from zero to plus, to plus five. And in fact, that range from zero to plus five happily is where most of us operate on a typical day. So on a typical day, most people are actually doing pretty well. Despite all of the numerous problems in the world, people on average are reasonably happy. They have caring relationships, they work on things that matter to them, and so positive psychology looks at that realm of human experience, at understanding all of the good things in life and how we can make them even better. So research in positive psychology has revealed both surprising findings and more intuitive ones. On the intuitive side, research has shown that around the world, uh, spending time with other people and building our social relationships seems to be critically important for happiness. And I think that's relatively intuitive. Most of us probably recognize that our social relationships are extremely important for our well-being. What is perhaps more surprising is that uh, some research suggests that even interacting with, say, the barista at Starbucks or a random guy at the dog park can actually make a difference for our feelings of happiness and belonging on a given day. One useful finding that I've been trying to apply in my own life um, is that putting our smartphones away when we're spending time with people we care about can actually increase our enjoyment of those experiences. Uh, so for example, in one study that, that we conducted, we asked people to come out to a restaurant and have dinner with friends or family members, and we either assigned them to put their phones away during the meal or to have their phones out and available. And what we saw is that people uh, enjoyed this quintessential experience of dining out with friends or family significantly more when they simply put their phones away out of sight than when their phones were out on the table. And so this is something I think all of us can quite easily do. It can also become a habit. By just doing this yourself, you're potentially modeling this positive behavior that then can encourage other people to do the same. When people had access to their phones during dinner, the typical person used their phone about 11% of the time during the meal. So most people were using their phones a bit, not a ton, but even using their phone for, you know, maybe 10 to 20 minutes out of the meal significantly detracted from their experience of uh, being out with friends and family. So to be clear, this doesn't mean that, you know, technology is destroying our social lives. It just means that, you know, even these simple day-to-day -day changes that we make uh, can produce a detectable difference for our enjoyment of everyday social experiences. I think one very important challenge for positive psychology uh, going forward lies in wrestling with some of the very real existential challenges that are facing us as human beings. In particular, the climate crisis seems like an area at first glance that isn't particularly ripe for exploration by positive psychologists. But I would disagree with that characterization. As much as shame, guilt and fear have been the dominant emotions surrounding the climate crisis, I think that there is an opportunity for positive psychologists to come in and think about, hey, could this crisis be an opportunity to rethink some of the habits that not only are bad for the planet, but that are bad for individuals' well-being? So for example, commuting creates uh, a serious burden on the planet in terms of the carbon footprint uh, caused by a daily commute. But commuting is also terrible for our happiness and our feelings of social connection. And so if we can dramatically reduce commuting time, for example, we could not only reduce uh, the carbon footprint, we could also improve individuals' happiness. 
I think it's time for positive psychologists to elbow their way in to the debate surrounding the climate crisis and to chip in with our knowledge, which I think can complement some of the uh, debate surrounding um, this incredible existential threat. people get the wrong idea about positive psychology, that it's just about sort of taking a happy-go-lucky perspective on life. And in fact, that's really not what positive psychology is about. In my own work, we have wrestled with some really challenging issues. We've begun to think about things like climate change, about how uh, the advent of new technologies might be undermining some uh, aspects of social life. Uh, but what we try to do is always have an eye out for how we can ultimately improve human flourishing. Another misconception of positive psychology is that it's only for you know, wealthy people in the Western world whose lives are very comfortable and safe. I would argue that people around the world care a lot about happiness, about well-being, about social connection, and that these are variables that can actually help to unite us as humans. These are aspects of life that are important to pretty much everybody everywhere. And so I think positive psychology is a big tent, one that welcomes in diverse perspectives and that can potentially help shed light not only on the sort of lighter topics of life, but also on some of the most serious challenges facing us today.